Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for being here today. Uh, I'm joined today by Commissioner Mark Peters of the New York City Department of Investigation, uh, New York City Public Advocate Tish James, uh, Commissioner Rick Chandler of the City's Department of Buildings, and Don Shackney, who is the first Deputy Commissioner of the City's Department of Housing, Preservation, and Development, or HPD. Also with me this morning are uh, the assistants who are responsible for the prosecution of this case, Andy Warshower and Christopher Ryan, uh, who is the head of the Violent Criminal Enterprises Unit, and my chief assistant, DA Karen Friedman Agnifilo. So we are sitting in the middle of a heat dome week, and it's uh, hard to remember how cold it was in New York City in the winter of 2014-15. In fact, it was one of the coldest winters that anyone could remember. Uh, one family that experienced deprivation during that winter were the Nicholas Cano family, who lived on the fifth floor of a five-floor walk-up located at 21 East 115th Street here in East Harlem, uh, shown in the picture to my right. They are a couple who immigrated here from Mexico uh, with, and have five children living with them in the ages now from 1 to 12 years old. That winter, while temperatures dropped to 10 below and more in New York City, uh, the family's landlord, the property manager, and the contractor engaged in a campaign of intimidation and of harassment to kick existing tenants out of this building uh, and, in the process, make extensive renovations and command higher rents. Today, we're announcing the arrests and indictments of those responsible uh, for creating this danger dangerous living environment as well as for the pattern of ongoing harassment and intimidation that this family was forced to endure. Uh, those arrested are the owner of the building, Efren Vashovsky, the property manager and eventual contractor, Adam Cohen, and the original contractor, Shul Ohana. Each has been indicted on charges of reckless endangerment, which is a class D felony, as well as endangering the welfare of a child. Uh, Vashovsky and Cohen, who stood to profit most from evicting the tenants of 5E, are further charged with the crime of conspiracy, among other counts, for a concerted effort they made to coerce the family to vacate the property. Now, as alleged in these indictments, in order to renovate the building and charge higher rents at this location, uh, it's alleged that these defendants harassed and threatened uh, the family filed false documents with city agencies, and most distressing, conducted ongoing demolition and construction that removed in this building the fireproofing, the fire escapes, the key structural elements, all of which left the family with no heat or hot water for significant periods of time during that frigid winter, and rendered this building on the verge of collapse, uh, making it wholly unsafe for human inhabitation, literally a death trap, all the while collecting rent. Defendant Ephraim Vashovsky purchased 21 East 115th Street in May of 2014. Almost immediately, the Nicholas Cano family were threatened in an effort to get them to move out. Some of the, made, some of the threats that were made were explicit. Uh, for the six months beginning in May of 2014, a man only known to the family as Sean showed up at their apartment often late at night. He would bang on their door, telling them in substance that he represented the building's owners and that the building owners wanted them out. Knowing that the tenants were undocumented immigrants from Mexico, he threatened to call immigration authorities and told them that they should leave the apartment, in quotes, the easy way as opposed to the hard way. Now, while most tenants of that building had already moved out, some having accepted buyouts from the landlord, the Nicholas Cano family in 5E resisted. Their children were thriving in a local school. The family were very close to a neighborhood church, which was an important part of, uh, of, of their community to them. Uh, and uh, they had many neighbors and friends in that neighborhood. And they also knew it would be next to impossible to find a family apartment big enough uh, for the price that they were paying at this apartment, <clears throat> $2,400 per month, under New York City's rent stabilization laws. But the defendants as it's alleged in the indictment, were determined to renovate this building and subsequently lied to the city to expedite construction. In August of 2014, also as alleged in the indictment, contractor Shul Ohana filed a work permit with the Department of Buildings to perform what he claimed were simply, in quotes, alterations to the building. That December, in an effort to expedite the permits, Adam Cohen, the property manager, 
filed documents with the Department of Buildings asserting, among other falsehoods, that the building was not subject to rent regulation laws. Cohen further claimed in those filings that the building was unoccupied and therefore did not require a tenant protection plan to safeguard its occupants during the construction. While simultaneously, Vashovsky was moving to evict the family through proceedings in family court. Now, there's obvious irony right there. As alleged in the indictment, at the same time that these defendants were fighting to evict this family on claims of overcrowding, they were asserting in signed documents filed with the city that the building was unoccupied. In January 2015, the owners commenced construction in earnest as if no one lived in apartment 5E. And despite the claims that they made in the permit applications, this was no simple alteration. This was a systematic demolition of the inside of the building down to the studs and the bones. As the family of seven continued to live in 5E during this demolition period, the defendants tore up all the flooring and subflooring from the first through fourth floors, leaving gaping holes behind unlocked doors that children could easily have fallen through. Demolished important structural elements such as load-bearing walls, beams, and joists. Removed critical fireproofing materials, including sheetrock, exposing dry, bare wood that could easily go up in flames, and took down the only fire escape accessible to the family in 5E and blocked the emergency fire egress from the basement in the building. By February of 2015, there was no heat, there was no hot water, that alone, and uh, let alone hot water, excuse me, and water began to leak through the ceiling due either to a ruptured water line or leaks in the roof. Their family belongings were destroyed. The family was forced to continually de-ice their own apartment for fear it would freeze over like the one next door. And you can see to my right, this is the adjacent apartment on the fifth floor during the, that period of the year where water had come in and it's literally created, uh, co coated the apartment with ice. To avoid that situation, the Cano family boiled water in order to provide enough heat in the apartment so that the ice would not form and stay. That five children had to endure these conditions is perhaps the most disturbing element of this case. The family did their best using space heaters when they had electricity, as I said, boiling water when they had gas, and at times bringing the children to sleep, to sleep at a nearby convent, thanks to the nuns who took them in. And throughout it, the defendants were cashing not only tenants' rent checks, but also the supplemental checks issued in their name by the New York City Department of Social Services. In that winter of 2015, everyone in this family suffered. The children lost sleep for the first time. Their schoolwork uh, was poor. Even going to the bathroom, the most basic of necessities was an ordeal for this family. When their toilet froze over, a bowl of solid ice, the family had to use public bathrooms at local restaurants instead of their own. Finally, in March of 2015, everything came to a head when the Department of Building and HPD inspected and immediately evacuated the family from the building with the help of the Fire Department of New York City and the Red Cross. As Commissioner Chandler will tell you, the building was in a terrible state. It's a miracle it didn't catch on fire and that none of the five children ventured too far from their apartment where they could have easily fallen down massive holes six stories down, six flat stories down to the basement. Even more concerning, because of the removal of so many structural elements, the entire building was at risk of collapse. And unbelievable as these facts may be to you already, the story doesn't end there. Even after the family left, Vashovsky continued to cash $1,000 worth of tenants' rent subsidy checks from the Department of Social Services. And construction began again in February of 2016, but within a month, inspectors found no central staircase, no ladders, no safety nets, or any type of protection for falls, and even more structural damage than had existed before. Construction workers were ordered to stop working at the site for their own safety. DOB immediately issued a full stop work order, and the building has remained boarded up, as you see to my right, ever since. So that brings us today to today. The defendants were taken into custody this morning and will be arraigned this afternoon before Judge Edward McLaughlin in Part 93 of 100 Center Street on the 15th floor at 2.15 this afternoon. Additionally, our office's asset forfeiture unit has filed a civil lawsuit against the defendants and their companies seeking the forfeiture of more than $3.3 million in connection with this case. So we've been here before talking about the issue of New York's dynamic real estate market, and it's led to unprecedented conversion of, of living spaces around the city 
and from time to time to abuses by those who would cut corners and endanger others in order to get profits. Furthermore, uh, this case again demonstrates the vulnerabilities common to many New Yorkers living in rent-stabilized housing. Many like these tenants may be undocumented immigrants. English may not be their first language, and they are hesitant to go to the authorities. Moving to another neighborhood under those conditions simply is not an option. So I'm very proud of the work that our government partners have done with us on this case, uh, working particularly to protect the immigrant communities that make this city great, but who often are the most in danger from those who are seeking to get an easy buck out of people who are too scared to report a crime. But at the end, uh, this reflects cooperation among agencies, which is so important uh, to build cases in this complex city area and to make sure that we are working going forward uh, in coordination. Tish James's office was critical in identifying some of the background history that led us to this property. Uh, Mark Peters' office, uh, as always, uh, uh, was deeply involved in the investigative stage and development of the facts, and uh, the other city agencies were critical in the development of this investigation. So, uh, with that, I'd like to introduce uh, someone you all know, our Commissioner for the Department of Investigations, Mark Peters. Thank you. Um, I want to thank District Attorney Vance, whose team of prosecutors uh, worked with DOI on this case. Uh, the District Attorney and his team have been at the absolute forefront of efforts to reform dangerous construction practices of the type we saw today. And as a result of our partnership, the property owner, property manager, and contractor associated with this building today stand charged with their illegal conduct, performing unsafe renovations, covering up the extent of their work, and harassing a family of tenants they wanted out of a rent-stabilized apartment. This investigation underscores what DOI has found time and again that there is a direct nexus between a dearth of integrity and dangerous building conditions. This scenario has only grave results. New Yorkers are placed at risk, and the reliability and safety of construction in this city are undermined. That is why DOI, working with the district attorney and others, has made construction safety a core focus of our independent investigatory efforts. In March of 2015, DOI was called to the site by the City Department of Housing Preservation and Development after the agency was told there were tenants residing with no heat and hot water and in a building that had been gutted around them. Floors had been removed. The roof appeared to be near collapse and water was leaking into the building, all in an apparent attempt to force tenants out of a rent-stabilized apartment. DOI working with housing and buildings inspectors, the public advocate, the Manhattan District Attorney, to uncover the serious history of violations of this site, one that led to a stop work order this past March. Even after tenants were moved out last year, unsafe work continued with no regard for workers, Thankfully, the stop work order was man has mandated that any work at the site cease, as you can see it's boarded up, until violations are addressed. This investigation highlights the layers of illegal conduct perpetrated by these defendants. Most strikingly, defendants actually removed the fire escape system from the building leaving the family with no means to get out if the entranceway was blocked by fire. Later, after the family was forced to leave the building, defendants continued to collect public rent subsidies, cheating the city of desperately needed housing funds. Unfortunately, this is not the first or second or even third time that the district attorney and I have stood at this podium to announce arrests related to buildings and construction fraud. We cannot assert this enough. Construction safety is not a compromise in this city. 
There is no tolerance for ignoring the city's construction rules, for treating other people, including tenants and workers, as collateral damage to the construction process. As this case demonstrates, as the prior cases we have been here announcing demonstrate, we will not turn a blind eye to unscrupulous developers and property interests. I want to once again thank all of the partners who worked on this investigation, the Manhattan District Attorney, Public Advocate James and her tireless team, HPD and DOB, and the team here at DOI, specifically Chief Investigator James McGillicutt, Special Investigator Dan Taylor, Inspector General Jessica Hegan, Associate Commissioner Jay Flaherty, Deputy Commissioner Mike Carroll, and First Deputy Commissioner Leslie Brovner. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Mark. Uh, and now we are fortunate to have the public advocate here to uh, address us as to her involvement in this case. Thanks. Thank you. I want to thank uh, District Attorney Cy Vance, uh, DOI Commissioner Peters, as well as DOB Commissioner Chandler, uh, for their tireless work in bringing this egregious problem to light and for partnering with our office to hold the responsible parties accountable. This was a case of an attempted eviction by demolition an extreme tenant harassment where a family was subjected to unthinkable and dangerous living conditions. Time and time again, the landlord of 21 East 115th Street, his partner and his contractor claimed that they were only doing minor renovations to this building. And when in reality, the tenants, a family with five children, was made to live amongst massive construction changes in a unit uh, in, amongst units that were demolished with the walls and floors knocked out, creating a five-story drop from the top to the basement. And the building was without fireproofing, without fire escapes, without heat, and without hot water. And in one instance, the, the pipe burst uh, during freezing temperatures, resulting in the entire apartment being encased in ice. This was all to exploit hard-working tenants and force them out of their rent control apartments, one that they had been living in for 14 years. And on top of that, this landlord had the audacity to collect rent from his tenants while they endured these daily dangerous conditions, prioritizing his bottom line over the safety and well-being of children. He engaged in this action because the entire family, they were immigrants, and he exploited and abused their status, jeopardizing their safety and ignoring their humanity and endangering their lives. These, unscru these types of unscrupulous housing practices have no place in our city, and they are an offense to our values and to our decency and to our common humanity, and that is why we have the worst landlord's list. This building was on the worst landlord's list, which brought it to our attention. So that the transparency can be met with decisive legal action to protect the most vulnerable amongst us. And as a result of uh, the worst landlord list, my office has been not only here, but at a number of district attorneys throughout the city of New York to bring landlords to justice and not to put the lives of individuals in jeopardy. We are fighting not only to serve justice for the tenants who were made to suffer such conditions, but also to safeguard against the repeat of this kind of exploitation. So let this indictment serve as a powerful message to any and all unscrupulous landlords out there who think that they can get away with this type of maltreatment in the name of earning another dollar. New York City stands behind its tenants, regardless of their status, their immigration status. And anyone who employs illegal tactics and harasses tenants will be met with more than just a slap on their wrist. So I want to thank all of the parties, but I particularly want to thank District Attorney Vance and his team. And I also want to thank for my office, Jennifer Levy, who's head of our lit lit litigation team, uh, for all of her hard work and for their hard work and for us working together for ensuring that justice in New York City will be served to all. Thank you, Tish. Uh, Commissioner Rick Chandler will speak next from the Department of Buildings. Uh, DOB, as you know, inspected and vacated the building at various points, and our tasks 
broadly with ensuring uh, that all our residences will be safe spaces for our citizens. Rick. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. DA Vance, Commissioner Peters, Public Advocate James, it's a privilege to work with you and your teams. This multi-agency effort reflects Mayor de Blasio's commitment to use all the tools available to protect vulnerable New Yorkers. Bad actors who put profits ahead of people's lives needs, need to take warning. You can't tear apart a building, especially one that's occupied, when a family with two young children is living there. Clearly, this was a demolition disguised as a renovation job. This case involves an occupied five-story, 10-unit building in East Harlem. The owner, manager, and contractor set in motion a very dangerous set of chain of events. During the renovation, the contractor removed structural supports for the building's roof and blocked roof drains that are supposed to carry away rain and snow melt. As a result, there was a major ice buildup on the roof, many inches thick and many hundreds of pounds. Our inspectors were concerned the weight of the ice, combined with the weakened structural supports, might cause the roof to come crashing down. A DOB inspector actually got up on the roof and helped break up the ice that evening and remove it. One of the examples where DOB staff frequently work in dangerous conditions to help the public. To make matters worse, this gut renovation job was performed with families still living in the building. This is intolerable and shows why the Tenant Protection Task Force, where we perform inspections with our fellow city and state agencies, is so necessary. The task force was created last spring. Right around this time, the case was discovered. Since then, we've conducted inspections at more than 600 buildings, written more than 2,500 violations, and issued more than 130 stop work orders. I'm proud of this multi-agency effort, as well as the actions that are being announced today. The building's owner and contractor showed utter disregard for their tenant's safety and contempt for the law, and we are determined to hold them accountable. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Rick. Uh, next and last, we will hear from uh, the Housing Preservation Department. Uh, First Deputy Commander, Commissioner John Shackney. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, on behalf of HPD Commissioner Vicki Bean, uh, I want to thank District Attorney Vance for his hard work and his team's dedication to this case. Today's indictment sends another clear message that owners who skirt the law and put their tenants' lives and well-being at risk will be held accountable for their actions. HPD is very proud to have referred this case to its partner, DOI, and we are gratified that this partnership and our work with the DA's office, DOB, Public Advocate's Office has helped lead to this indictment. HPD will continue to use all of its enforcement tools to protect the health, safety, and well-being of all our city's renters. Again, my sincere thanks to the District Attorney for his work in putting this indictment together and our shared commitment to protect our city's tenants. Thank you. Well, I'd like to end by saying thank you to Tish James for her work in uh, bringing this to our attention, of course, to our partners at HPD, DOB, um, and uh, the DOI, and our partnership with Mark. But principally, I want to thank the assistants in my office who, uh, who really do a fantastic job and put their heart into bringing justice for this family and uh, care a great deal about the work they do. Thanks so much.